when we take a look at uh, what the Old Testament is saying and what the New Testament is saying, here's what we find. There is one God. Every, uh, the scriptures say that very clearly. But then it says that the Holy Spirit is God, as we saw in the book of Acts. It says that Jesus is, we, is God, as we th see through the earliest writings of the New Testament, and the Father is God, which we all concede. And the scripture also says Jesus is not the Father, and the Holy Spirit is not the Father, and Jesus is not the Holy Spirit. That is the data before us. How do we resolve it? The only way to resolve it is we say that God is one, just like it's part of the data, God is one being, but that he has multiple persons within that being. That explains why you can have Yahweh here in Genesis 18 and 19 and Yahweh there. That explains why Yahweh can say he was sent by Yahweh and the Holy Spirit. So the best way to explain the data, and that's what I find we should make sure we are doing, not bringing our conclusions and trying to fit that to the data. Take a look at the data, see what all the verses say, and then come up with the best explanation of the data at hand. And that's where you'll end up with the view of the Trinity from scripture. Then as you go through the Gospel of John, you see things that Jesus says, like in John chapter 8, verse 58. Some Jews ask him, they say, you're not even 50 years old, yet you claim to have seen Abraham. And Jesus' response is, amen, amen. Before Abraham was born, I am. Now, you know, when you're Muslim, you haven't heard the term I am before. You don't know what that means. But when someone points you to Exodus chapter 3, verse 14, where God tells Moses that his name is Anahu, I am, that now it begins to make sense what Jesus is saying. Someone asks him, you're not even 50 years old. Jesus' response is, I am, I eternally exist even before Abraham was born. Yes, because he's taking the name of the God of Moses. It's pretty clear. By the way, if there are any Muslims listening and thinking that's not convincing enough, go to John 20, 28, where someone calls Jesus God and Jesus' response is basically, finally, <laughs> took you long enough. The claim I'm making is that Jesus' resurrection is historically the most responsible claim. It is by far the one that fits the facts the best. That's my claim. So number one, we've looked at Jesus' death on the cross. Number two, we've looked at the fact that it's good to, it's, it's reasonable to believe and far the most reasonable thing to believe that he rose from the dead. What about number three? This is the one that mattered to me most as a Muslim. Did Jesus claim to be God or not?